One-to-one -one conversations with the UK graffiti writers you need to know. Writers before the fame, where it's all about style, getting up, and authenticity. Molotov Art and Paint Supplies proudly sponsored a Killer Keller podcast graffiti sweet week special. Seven writers spread across three generations of UK graffiti. Headphones on, speakers up, and get ready for the conversation. Come on, ma. Please. Who does? Sorry, English. What a fight, English. We love food, we just be here. Boom, ding. Oh, look, oh, no. Watch them on them brain now. Killer Cala Fortified featuring Patwan. Available on all good music platforms now. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Cala. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Cala podcast. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Do that again now. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are live and direct, and look, we're in a different location, we're in a special location. We are what is the nerve centre of arguably the capital of graph in, in the UK, with one of the kings of the game, the mighty zombie. Be barely speaks, so we got him for an exclusive in his, uh, in his, in his home, in his habitat. <laughs> what are you saying? The habitat. <laughs> the habitat. <laughs> you know, and what's fucking great is that it feels like that. It feels like it's yours. Yeah, here every day, five days a week, so it does feel like home most of the time, yeah. Yeah. How long does it take for you to kind of muster up something of such, like, a mass amount? Like, you've got a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah, it took us a long time, a lot of hard work. Yeah. Like, yeah, pure graft. People don't really, they come here and they see it and they appreciate it, but they don't. Some people don't really know how much work that they've actually been put into making it into what it is now. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Be I think all a lot of it boils down to is, like, your history. I think yeah. people know that there's credi there's credibility to the spot. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's bona fide. Yeah, because they're mainly writers that run the shop. There's other shops that... But they ain't run by writers like this one. Yeah. So it's different, because that little edge, and we're London writers as well, from the old school and the new school. Yeah. So. Yeah, man, like... Now listen, you know, a bit of backstory here. Z zombie, rape, DDS, all, all crew inside, you literally fell, in my mind, you fell like in that sweet spot of like golden era, our golden era. You know what I mean? Yeah, the 80s. With the 80s. Late 80s. Yeah, exactly. And you you kind of crafted what became, what well, has become the kind of look of London. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Some people say that, you know what I mean? For me, I'm just a player in the game, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, London yeah. game's a big game. You're I'm a contender. just one of the players, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And see, so, yeah, I've been here from the beginning until now. Yeah. So, yeah. Doesn't the legends... When people class someone as a legend, it almost dates them immediately. But when you when you're in your head, you're a contender. Because I get that too. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, no, I'm still in the game. Yeah, still yeah, doing... you're still, still a player. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. I don't think it, I think people say legend and that they they use it a bit loosely and I mean really I should be called a legend after I finish you know what I mean doing what I've done at the moment I'm still work in progress yeah, yeah. You know what I mean yeah yeah you are and I've seen a lot of stuff I think this shop has given you kind of like the scent and the nerve system for you to like actually exercise your craft even more yeah sometimes yeah but sometimes the shop gets so busy I don't get time to paint it's all work. But, yeah. you know what I mean, I try to paint as much as I can, basically, you know what I mean, and be creative. It's yeah. the old aim of the game for me, be yeah, creative. Bro. What's yeah. it, like, being out here, though, like, do you ever get, like, questioned about, like, you know, having a graph shop in Bethnal? Do you ever get quizzed at all? Do people ever, like, roll up be like, you know, is this legit? Yeah, yeah, when we first opened, people were like, what, graffiti shop, you're selling spray paint, you're allowed to do that. But now it's just kind of like become a bit of a norm now people are just used to it you know what i mean they're used to coming in they can pay by a card or whatever they, they, they can see everything's legit yeah. you know what i mean just about yeah yeah yeah, yeah I mean? exactly. <laughs> just about i guess it's like with everything it comes with its baggage doesn't it but yeah. like you can't be in control of that baggage no nah, i can't yeah yeah it's just one of them things yeah so yeah sometimes it is stressful but you know what i mean so i have to pinch myself sometimes and just say to myself i'm lucky you know what i mean i'm doing what i'm doing and through what i've done and you know what I mean, I have to be, I have to, I have to give praise, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 and you're doing, you're still active, yeah. like, doing your thing. Yeah. But let's, um, let's go back a little bit, let's go back to, like, when you first started. 
Um, all these questions I've got so much to ask, Jay. Right, so when you first started like doing your thing, what was what what names did you go under? What was what was the initial names? My first name was Rate R A T E. Yeah. That's my first tag, and I got that tag from Lambeth Town Hall. There was a thing happening at Lambeth Town Hall. It was called Rate Capping. It was in the eighties, and it had a big banner on the side of the town hall. And it said Rate Capping, so I thought, right, Rate, I'm going to take that tag. And that's how it started, basically. No way. Yeah, that's so how it started. Just like that? Yeah, just like that. Because I remember that. That, for me, was like, I remember you and Teach were like the, a crazy combination of like, knocking out yeah. trains and, like, you know what I mean? Like, full-on, top-to-bottom. Yeah, Teach was quite a good writer at the time, you know what I mean? And I was kind of older than him. And I had the old style and he had the new style. And we kind of, like, combined together and we done our thing for many years. Yeah. Do you think, cool. yeah, I think it integrated, it really felt like integrated, didn't it? Yeah, kind of, yeah. like, bounced off each other, kind of, you yeah. know what I mean? Were you and him spars for a good yeah, while? Yeah, 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 a good while. Yeah. What it was, I was I was in and out of prison quite a lot. And there's one time that I come out of prison and I met Teach down in Fulham. And I didn't really know him, and he was a new writer. And he's going, yeah, we're going out to do something. And I goes, all right, then I might come with you, and then... Went with him that night, onto the tracks, done our painting, and then from then on, became a constant thing. Yeah, there is a there's a real uh, kin, isn't there? There's like a brotherhood to that shit. Cause like once you're once you're rolling out and you're doing what you're doing, it's like you've got to have the confidence of the the writer with you or the per people with you. Yeah, you? yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah, to bounce off. Yeah, basically to give you that creativity and to make your style look as good as you want it to look. Yeah, yeah, I'd imagine so. Yeah, and they got you back. Like, did, is that a factor? Like, were you mindful, like, back in the day of, like, how many of you was rolling at any single time? Or... No, nah, it was always... It, all, it, it was all happening so fast. It was like a snowball effect, you know yeah. what I mean? It was just like people jumping on board and it would become bigger and bigger and bigger and it kept rolling and rolling and more stuff was getting done, more painting was getting done. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah, because it was quite... The 90s was... It, w it was a quite a good time for graffiti. You know yeah. what I mean? It was a bit more. It was a bit better than the eighties because the nineties was a bit more organised. The eighties it was all new and people didn't really know and like they'd done a piece a year or something. In the nineties, people were just like quantity, like right, that's it. We know what we're doing now. We know how we know how we need to do it. Bam, 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 bam. Because yeah. there definitely was that urgency, like even with the dubs, the fraps, everything trackside was just like it was like it was a lot. Yeah, yeah, and nothing was get, really getting cleaned and. So people were just doing more and more, so it looked like it was a lot. You know what I mean, yeah. now they're cleaning stuff regularly, so you don't really see a lot of it as much as you did before. Yeah, I always rated like rate as a as a piece. The the letters as well, they're yeah, just got, real proper. Yeah, I've got my classic bubble style. That's yeah. what I do. I can do it quick. I can do it like with my eyes closed. So How can quick can you do it? Maybe about five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. And you know, with the new paint, I'm, I'm sure... Like, yeah, new paint's even better, it's even quicker. You cool. get a super fat cap, put that on it, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Even, some of the, even some of the regular caps are yeah. what the fat caps used to be. Yeah, exactly. All the caps have changed. There's about 50 caps now. Back in the days, we only used two caps, fat cap and a medium cap. Yeah. Now there's like 50 caps and there's like 20 brands of paint. This is insane, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, what's your, what was your uh, can of choice? What, what brands did you used to go for when you was doing back in the day? Probably back? Homestyle. Homestyle, yeah. I was more into, like, the bombing. Mm. I wasn't really a creative person. I used to do pieces now and again, but I was more into, like, throw-ups and bombing and tagging. And yeah. that's, that's, I mean, that's where I come from. I weren't really an artist. I ain't a natural artist. I had to teach myself. Yeah. You know what I mean, I wanted to be good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you think, like, you teaching yourself, ultimately, you wouldn't have come to the conclusion of your style in any other way? If you had taught taught stuff it would have been different yeah, yeah. it'd have been like that for me the best way to teach to teach teach yourself yeah you know what i mean just work work it out so it's sometimes it's a bit disheartening because you don't feel like you're going anywhere but you are going somewhere but slowly and when yeah. you get there you know what i mean it makes sense yeah you know and you're I mean? not influenced by any because the same me beatboxing you know, if i'd gone to school doing music it wouldn't have been right it wouldn't have yeah do you know what i mean yeah it's that, it's that same as graffiti writers yeah. that go to art college yeah it's different yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a bit different than yeah. teaching yourself from the streets, you know what I mean? That's right. You've got that edge. And I think people, like, especially with the shop being here as well, I think people get the opportunity to uh, get schooled properly. Yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, or get a little vision, you know what I mean? Or ask a few questions and, you know what I mean? There's a way I always get writers coming in and asking me little questions and this and that. I always try, you know what I mean, give them yeah. something positive to go with, you yeah. know what I mean? Back in the day, like, with DDS, like, who would you say... You know, in all fairness, you know, the broadness of, like, calibre that was in the crew. Yeah. Um, 
who did you write? Who did you say to yourself, you know what? He's the bomb. He's the one. He's a, he's a, he's he's. There's a, a few. That's shoe two. Shoe two. Yeah. Teach. Yeah. You've got sub for the bombing. Yeah, sub smash that. Whoa. Yeah, there's quite a few. You got stacks. He was DDS. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few that were quite good. I used to look back and think, yeah, that's a nice piece. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Even now, when I look at some of the old stuff, I just think, yeah, that's really nice yeah. for back then. You know what I mean? It was a bit ahead of their time. Yeah. Like especially Teach, he was doing nice pieces on trains at the time, you know what I mean? Yeah. He was like a bit of an art student, so he had the colours and, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, little guy. He, he knew how to put it down well. Yeah. Do you, um... Because it kind of grew legs of its own, DDS, didn't it? All of a sudden, yeah. it was just like... The name became bigger than it. Yeah, it's exploded, yeah. Yeah, it exploded. I mean, there was a few contributing pieces that really done the... That, the like, Fume, that Fume six-footer. yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, the Bosch, yeah, Bosch, and you got the North, the North London, the end of DDS as well, Bosch and Ouch, and we all had, we had, we had little kind of like branches all over yeah, London. Did, yeah, properly pocket. And when we got together, it was it was party time. Was it? Yeah, <laughs> it was party time. Did you talk to me about that? So we really went down. So you guys used to hang out like. Yeah, we used to meet up at Farringdon sometimes at twelve o'clock or Finchley Road. There'd be like twenty of us on the platform, no ticket, going out racking, no. drinking beer at like one o'clock in the afternoon, doing inside in front of people. Yeah, we was, yeah, we was a bit of a menace for, for a few years. In front of people as well, just yeah. like bang bang. Yeah, yeah, because there's so many of us, you know what I mean? We just couldn't be touched. Yeah, we just couldn't be much, touched. Yeah. If someone said it, it would just be drama. So, yeah, yeah, that's how we used to roll sometimes. That's amazing. See, I, that's folklore, that's business. Where yeah. you think it's like, well, where they used to bench, how did it used to happen? Where did, how did it go down? But you're saying it literally yeah. went down as you would imagine it. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, there's been several benches in London over the years, you know what I mean? But Farringdon was probably like, that was a good writer's bench because it connected the north to the south through the Thames Link line. Yeah. And the Metropolitan line went north to east. Of course, so wherever, yeah. whatever part of London you're from, you can make it to Farringdon. That's right. It's like yeah. the junction, you know what I mean? So we always met there. Um, Teach told me that there was like a spot where I've got, people used to live um, where fabric is. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so there used to be a spot there where pe it used to just be like the place where people would rest up. Yeah, Farringdon. Yeah. Uh, Fabrics Fabric, was... Yeah. yeah, Fabrics was... That used to be an old building that we used to get through. Before it was Fabrics, we used to go through that building and get into the train yard and paint the trains in Farringdon. Oh, cold! Before Fabric. I, had, I, I actually put a photo on my Facebook the other day of the door that we used to go through. Really? To get into the train yard from Fabrics. And For those got, that know. And and they've got the picture in a frame. When you go into Fabrics now, you go down the stairs, they've got the picture in the frame on the wall. No way. Yeah. And I think Fume or someone's written something, DDS, we can't be stopped or something, on above the door, like a big metal door. No. But the beauty of it, that door you can go through, I think it was Fuel. Yeah, Fuel who found the way in. But basically that door, it's a big metal door, you open it and the train was right literally out where that wall is. So if you see the security coming, you could actually finish your thing, run to the door, close it, and that'd be it. You're and they couldn't, get, they couldn't get in? Couldn't get to you, that was the beauty of it. But we only done it a few times before they clocked Tommy was coming in that way and then yeah. they just locked it off and then they made it into a building site and they built a nightclub, Fabrics. Yeah, that, so Fabric, yeah. yeah the, the fabrics. It was an abattoir, wasn't it? It was part of the abattoir. Yeah, yeah, that's it. All the underground, spit of fields kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So it was all a bit grimy, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was all grimy, underground, and you had the Tendling layup on the other end and you had the underground layup here. Yeah, it was quite a nice spot for yeah. a few years, yeah. Haunting Sawtooth style, like... Yeah. Undercover graph, yeah. like it wasn't my favorite spot because it was only two trains and it was that kind of in a pit. And yeah, yeah but it, it was nice, it was nice for the time we was doing it. You know, some people done it more than other people. Yeah. My favorite probably place would probably Triangle Side in Gloucester Road. That was my favorite Gloucester spot, Road, yeah. yeah. Gloucester Road in the tunnel was five trains, Hammersmith trains in the tunnel. Oh, it's so beautiful, hit them, yeah. So that yeah. was my favorite spot, yeah. How much time did you normally have for like a for a train hit? Like if you used to do a full piece, you know, like back in the day. It all it all depends. Sometimes you get an hour, sometimes an hour and a half. Depends. Mm. It all depends what you're doing. If you do a window down, if you're doing top to bottom, you know what I mean? Depends if there's a few of you, there's one of you or two of you. It all depends. It all depends. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I guess yeah, safety in numbers again. Yeah. Um Yeah, I'm I'm a fan of like what's going on now, like but the t the times have changed. Yeah. And there's a it's, it's so much more against you. Well, if you're involved in it, it's so much against you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's always been a bit like that, you know what I mean? It's, mm. For me, I see graph, it's a, it's a bit more accepted now than yeah. what it used to be. Yeah. Now it's all cool, you know what I mean, to be a writer and street art. And, but, but 
back in the 90s and the 80s, you know what I mean? It was a bit sticky, you know what I mean, being a graph writer. Mm. Especially when I was from South London, like, not many people from my estate really wrote, and it was always going to be, why are you doing graph for that? Yeah. Well, I just kept at it. Yeah. And I still see them same people today. Really? And they're in dead-end jobs. And they're like, what are you doing? Oh, I've got a graph shop, this, that. And they're like, wow. That's like 25 years ago. It's fucking good. shocking. Well, it's a good feeling, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is know, a good yeah. feeling, because I've kept at it. All that I like, I've been to, I've been to prison a few times for it, but I've always kept at it. You know what I mean? I've yeah. always had that mentality. You ain't stopping me from doing this. You know what I mean? This yeah. is my freedom. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can lock me up, bang! I'll come out and I'll carry on doing it. I was kind of like hard line like that. Yeah. But I wanted them people to get locked up and come out and go. No, I ain't doing this. I'm giving up. I weren't never like that. Yeah. I was one of the hard line kind of writers. What motivated you? What was the thing that motivated you in that respect? Uh, what motivated me? Uh, I just wanted to get up. Yeah. I just wanted to make a name for myself. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? From like Subway Art and Star Wars. I was like, I want to be like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Now that's how I want to be. I want to be creative. I want my own style. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to be up everywhere. Yeah, and that's what kept me moving. I, I didn't really see anything else much going on in London at the time. You know what I mean? Mm. To either get a job, you know what I mean? Or something like that. I thought, you know what, I'm just going to carry on doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay, Subway Arc gets mentioned a lot in, in these yeah, chats. It's a, yeah, it's a Bible and Star Wars, you know what yeah. I mean? They're the things that kind of like properly elevated me into like hip-hop and... Uh, I've, I like hip-hop and like Grandmaster Flash and the early electro hip-hop before I knew about Graf. Right, so right. when I see Graf, it was like, what? Yeah. There's actually a picture to that, to that music. Yeah. So that was it. I was hooked straight away. That's insane, isn't it? To yeah. think that... All the way back there, it was so new. It was yeah. something that was so... London got an absolute battery, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, it did. It all started on the buses, really, for me. South London, that's where it started. On the buses, I mean? yeah, yeah? on the buses. South London buses, 80, 86 to 87, no 88. Way. Yeah. Wow. That's when I started. That was like the early days. What, doing outside the buses, inside the buses? Inside. Inside, yeah. yeah. We were, we like, South, we were king of like bus bombing back then. Really? Yeah, that's where it all started, yeah. We used wow. to meet at a different castle, hit all the buses. Yeah. I mean, that sort of thing. And then eventually from there, it elevated onto the trains. Mm, wow. I mean. It's mad, isn't it, th- th- how that happens? And I always, I mean, I always assumed that like, you were South London. I mean, mm. obviously you're not now, you know, you, mm. you're everywhere. But yeah, I, I had this association for a long time with DDS being self yeah. orientated. Yeah, but the thing about it, people talk about me about DDS, but DDS is at the mid of my career. Isn't it, it, it isn't even the beginning. That's like after all the madness, and then I went into like the DDS era, and then travelled through that. But before that, a lot of stuff happened. A lot of stuff. Pioneering stuff. Yeah. Before DDS. So the, yeah. so you're talking like the buses. The buses, the tubes. Yeah. I used to write. I used to write with a writer called Event One. He was yeah. from Kennington. I was from. I used to go onto the Metropolitan Line every single night, just do inside yards with some of the big Northwest London writers. That's how I basically got onto the trains. Wow. Yeah. Fuck. So yeah. Well, you were just writing solo. Was there any other? Was it any, any pseudonyms like L or nah, crew? Just rate. Yeah, just rate. We used to write TKS. That T- was our yeah, crew. Okay, TKS yeah, and not and nasty habits. They were the early yeah. crews. The TKS is like our DDS is like our carry on from TKS. Right. Uh, I mean, it was like yeah. a lot of the writers from TKS went into DDS. Not everyone, but a few of them, you know I, I mean? still see TKS. Yeah, yeah, TKS is one of the main London... People don't really chat about it, but it's one of the main... It's one of the biggest London crews that mm. there was mm. for the 80s and rolling into the DDS yeah. era. No, Drax talks about it. Yeah. Drax talks about that as well. Yeah, it's a know. big crew, you know what I mean? The base is made up by a guy called uh, Die 406, lives in Holston. <laughs> it's his crew. In Halston? Yeah, Halston, yeah, that's where it oh, started. So it's northwest, yeah. Uh, northwest, wow. yeah. That's where a lot of graph happened back in the days on the Metropolitan line between Harrow on the Hill and Finchley Road. Yeah. That's where we used to like that. That's my favourite part stretch of the London Underground. Even now, you love that spot? Yeah, even now, you know what I mean? That's the best line, the Metropolitan line for me. When people go, oh, D, what's your, what's your favourite line? I will always say, yeah, Metropolitan line. Yeah. Some people say, oh, the Circle line, the Hammersmith line. And, but for me, yeah, it's the Metropolitan line. Yeah. Just because of my memories and you know what I mean from what I remember oh, so it's, it's more vibe than yeah than, it's more vibe yeah. we used to meet other writers you know what I mean mm. we used to meet people on stations I got one of my first outlines from one of them writers from up there Tilt used to write Tilt he, oh he, yeah man he gave me my first outline for real yeah what and I painted it underneath Northwood Park Ridge in about 88 I think that's crazy. I mean, as you can hear, right? I mean, we're in the like the hub here, and like the trains are rolling above us. You're definitely gonna feel the the energy when this comes out. Like you talk about like subway art and all that, but you know what? Like, 
for me and a handful of others at the time when we was going out, oh, we'd actively go on the trains and just check what's what's going yeah. on online. And like Kings and Toys was like biblical for us, mm. which was a, for those of you that are out of the country, like <sighs> Kings and Toys was just like, it was like an up-to-date version of where Graf was at. Yeah, at that time, yeah. At that time. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. Tell a story, because you did, you did, before we started, you were talking about it. Oh, Tell yeah. me the story of how, how you got on Kings and Toys. Okay, the Kings and Toys story was, yeah, I done it, uh, I was away for a bit and then I come out and I was in a hostel in Brixton, up in the top end of Brixton and I think I got a phone call or someone contacted me saying, yeah, they want to do some interview with me. So I said, nah, I don't really do interviews and... They come to see me and they said, right, yeah, we want to do this interview. And I go, well, I need you paying for it? And they go, well, we ain't paying no one else. So well, I can't do it then. So they went and then they come back and they go, we can pay you. <laughs> so they paid me. And at that time we was doing it, my cousin from Birmingham was there. My other mate, Cos, he was in the room as well. And I think Teach was in my room as well. So it was, I was four in the room. I and thought then, the other guy was Zonk. I don't know what made me think that the other guy that was in the room was Zonk. I, said, I remember seeing Cos... Of course, teach and a black guy, there's a proper black guy yeah. there. That's my cousin, B Bob from Birmingham. He was just stayed in London at the time, so he was in my room. So they come in with all the camera equipment and that, and yeah, done the interview. I didn't think nothing of it at the time, you know what I mean? I just thought it's a little, little interview, and then I see the DVD and I was like, it's nice. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's done well. It's done really well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I remember like, it became like a, a, a reference point. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how old was I? I must have been about 21. But when I see it, I'm like, all of a sudden, names to faces, the the things that you've done in history and that lot, you know, all of a sudden it had a lot more clarity. Yeah. It was more, and it would have been absolutely inconceivable to think that you wouldn't have been on that. Yeah. Door. That's a crazy thought. That's probably why they paid me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably, yeah. But yeah, I enjoyed doing it, and I'm glad I done it in the end. You know what I mean? I should have done it for free, really, but it's, shit happened. Well, you it? just come out, right? So yeah, you just come really... out, and then we didn't really have much money, so. I mean, I needed to do something. Yeah. I mean, there's an argument where it's like, yeah, you should be paid. Yeah. You know? And you should never be afraid of asking. That's what I've learned anyway. The yeah. older you get, the more wiser to that you become. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was a touch to see Cos on there as well. And just... Yeah, Cos is a king, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's, like, yeah. he's like the younger writers. But for me, like, there's only a few younger writers that I can say, yeah, but Cos is... He you know kinged I mean? it. He kinged it. So hard. Um, universal, you know what I mean? Always love for Cos. Yeah, Zonk kinged it. Zonk kinged it as well. He, he, he took his foot off the pedal for a bit, you know what I mean? But yeah, he kinged it, you know what I mean? Yeah, kinged it hard. These were the two that I think were, were relative. They were relative like the younger to, generation. Yeah, they was yeah, my yeah, age. Yeah, that, yeah. And, uh, you know, but then there was others, you know, there was a ton of others, like Sham. Yeah, Sham 59, King as, King well, as well, King of Bombing, South yeah. London King, you know what I yeah. mean? And he had, that graph, he had that graph shop as well in Brixton, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he had HQ with yeah. Steez as well. Yeah. Steez is another writer Steez another well. King, yeah. Another King, you know what yeah. I mean? He's still you're churning them out. You know I, mean? <laughs> I take my hat off to Steez always. Any time I see something new by him, I'm just like, wow, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Even though he doesn't do that much, but when he does, it's impact, you know what I mean? You seem like a very, very much a, a kind of reference point and a connoisseur of like what, what technically and uh, is obviously right yeah. in a piece. Like, what do you look for when you're like when you see other writers? You know, I mean, apart from the king in its side, like you know when someone's up. But what about the technicality in this stuff? What do you look for? I look for neatness, style, colours. There's yeah. certain little things that are programmed into my head that you know. What I mean, if they all add up, yeah, I like it. Yeah. You know what I mean, I can't really say what they exactly are, but yeah, it's usually neatness, mm. colours, and you know what I mean how it shapes the format of it. Yeah. It's like that. It is like that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's how I look at graffiti you now. It's energy, you know isn't it? I mean, it's... yeah. And me, I'm straight up. If I don't like something, I'll say I don't like it. And if I like it, I'll be like, oh, that, that is nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm straight in myself and I'm old enough. Yeah, yeah. I don't do no more hiding, you know what I mean? Yeah. If I like it, I like it. If I don't like it, I'll say. Yeah. You know what I mean, no hating involved. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. It's not personal. It's no, not, it's not, not personal. Your, no, it's not, not their day today. Not at all. And, and all the young writers that come in here, they ain't that good, but they show me stuff. I always give them positive, you know what I mean? Positive stuff to go with. Go, yeah, keep doing it. It looks a bit wonky, yeah, but if you keep doing it, you'll get there and you'll get the straight lines and you get this and that. And a few months yeah. later, I'll see them again and I'll be like, wow. Yeah, no, you know I know. Mean? It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, how it's they can... good. You know what I mean? What's you have to be what's... hungry for it as well. You have to be hungry for it. You can't yeah. just be like, it's going to come to you naturally because it ain't. You know what I mean? You have to be like, I need it. It's mm. one of them ones. Mm. As somebody that's, that's 
that's set precedence to a lot of style that's gone through the generations, right? What is the first thing that you see in young writers that as a common uh, uh, fuck up? What's the what's the common thing you're like? They always do this, and they always start like this, and it sh- they shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, they try and do things too quick most of the time. I see, it's like everything's quick and ain't really like the attitude is like, oh, I can't be bothered. I don't care. There's only this, you know mm. what I mean? You should you should really care about every piece of work that you do. Mm. That's how I see it. Like, everything I do, I try to put a bit of you know what I mean, a bit of special into it. I don't just do something. I don't care. And just leave it. Yeah, yeah never yeah. do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's right. Some of the kids they ain't really got that. They ain't really, they, they ain't really got the patience for it. Because mm. the mm. younger generation, I just want quick, 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 yeah, quick. Yeah. But things don't come quick. You know yeah. what I mean? Things don't come quick. Do you think that's our social media? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, definitely social media. So, uh, Instagram and all them social media platforms have just changed the whole game. Now, okay, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But they do it's it to different. get. They do it for the shop. Yeah, they, they do, do it. Yeah, they do it. It's, you got Instagram kings now. You know yeah. what I mean? I was talking about this like. I was talking to Vamp, and he was. It's true, isn't it? It's like there, there really almost becomes this big dip in the DNA of scenes. Yeah. And it's as soon as Instagram came along. Technology. And it made this huge leap into all of a sudden, like what is irrelevant and what becomes irrelevant. Yeah. It's like this massive hole of nothing. That's right. Before technology, it was nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. You leave your house with a few numbers on a piece of paper, call your mates on the telephone box, no mobile phone, no nothing. If you missed it, you missed it. You yeah. had to be there. Yeah. It's better that way, you know what I mean? And if you wanted to see stuff, you have to go out physically, leave your house, go onto the train station, catch a train and go and look at it for yourself. Yeah. Now you just wake up in the morning, log into Instagram, bam, bam, bang, UK Frontline, yeah, bang. Yeah, yeah. I see that, see that. Yeah, that's I mean, right. It's crazy. That's right, yeah, yeah. And the anonymity of that, while being great, it's like people are only actually, to, to argue the case, like a lot of people are only doing it for that, that yeah. one video on there. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah, a lot of people. Not all people, but yeah, there's yeah. a lot of people that do for that. You know big up I mean? UK Frontline as well, by yeah, the way. Yeah, of course, always. And big up Vamp as well, yeah. do, always doing his thing. Yeah, you know always mean? doing his thing, yeah. relentlessly. Um, well, I'm going to ask something controversial here. Um, if, like, you got a shot, we're here, the vibe's great. Yeah. But you come from like a history of like, well, not you personally, but you know, mm. an era of racking. Yeah. Getting, getting it up the hard way. Teeth right. in the paint. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like now we're in this situation, right? <laughs> you know, you know, as you get older, all of a sudden you got the shop and shit. Like, and uh, yeah, what does that pose for you? How does it, how do you, how does it, how you validate that? In your head, it feels strange to me because back in the days we used to go, back in the days we used to go racking. It feels all strange because I always looked at the paint racks and think, oh, you know what? I'd do anything to have that rack of paint in my house. It was like a dream just mm. to have have a, like a quarter of what we got in here in your like own it. And now we have it all. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's crazy. So you can live your dreams. Mm. Not impossible. I guess what I guess what you're, where you're coming from is like, and I get the argument. It's like. There was a time where that that that's been laboured, that's yeah. been created, and the colours were never there. Yeah. The cans, the technology was never there. To have this when you was you would have happily paid for the shit but yeah. if you had the money yeah. and you, yeah. you knew that the colours yeah. were there. You would have paid for it, yeah, for sure. But the paint wasn't that good quality back then. You no, know what I mean, so we were just, just yeah. When it when it comes to racking, we were just racking every day. I had a list of shop sites to get my paint from regularly, regularly, regularly. Did you get banned from them? I bet you got banned yeah, a couple of banned from loads of shops. Yeah. yeah. I, I, was, I was out racking. That's the only way you could get up back then was to rack. You had to be a thief, you yeah. know what I mean, to get up. If you wasn't a thief, you had to be rich and then you had to pay for the paint, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But you had to be a proper, like, thief. You had to do all the techniques, tuck a T-shirt in, walk in with a colour chart. You had to know all the psychological ways how to do stuff, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah cool. racking was quite a tech, it was a big part of graph. Yeah. Big, big part. It was like mainly 60% really? of the mission. Yeah, you had to get your paint. You never had no money, so you had to bunk the train to get there. You had to steal the paint, bunk back, and then you had to go to the train yard at night and hopefully yeah. paint without getting caught, and then you had to get away from there. Yeah, it was, yeah. What drove you? What drove you to, in that situation to, like, constantly be on the back foot of, like, doing wrong to create the right excitement was it it's excitement people say oh it's buzz but i don't really use that word buzz it's more of an excitement more of a you know what i mean with my mates we've got something in common we're going to do something illegal we're going into the tunnels normal people don't know about this stuff it was more it's more like that uh, it's the intel yeah it's more underground yeah, you know what I mean? I like yeah. 
Yeah. It's more secret agent kind of stuff. Yeah. Now graphs are all out in the open. You can find out anyone. Yeah. You can call this person. You can contact scene now or scheme. or. But back then it was more like everything was a bit more... Yeah. I mean, it's a bit more quieter. I think that was the appeal for a lot of people in the UK hip hop scene, me especially, was the whole kind of the undertone of like you not knowing where these guys are, what yeah. they're doing, what they're, how they're doing, how they're doing, it. how they're getting all these colours on the sides of the train. You know what I mean? Yeah. How do they know where to see this train to get a photo? You know what I mean? How do they know how to get in there and the electric tracks and all that's all a mystery? You know, how do they get their paint? Yeah. Yeah. It's very romantic, isn't it? I do miss it. You know yeah. I mean, I do miss them raw years, you know what I mean? We used to go out there and just meet people, meet other people on the line. What are you doing? Are we going back and come back in with us? Go back and get some paint and then they'll take you to their plot or you take them to your plot. And yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like our underground family. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. It's, and they're, they're, it's a code, isn't it? Yeah. It's a code, yeah. Definitely. Now, graph's a bit different. It's a bit more... It's a bit more open. It's a bit more out there. It's, it's, it's like our... Still a culture, but it's a bit more exposed. Mm. You know what I mean, you talk about people, normal people about graph, more than likely they're gonna they're gonna know something about it. They might yeah. not know everybody, they're gonna know they'll mention a few names, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. But that comes at an adverse of like, you know, you've also got the authorities that can play that game as well. Mm. If it's openly available online. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you can't trust everybody, you know. No, you can't, especially the Instagram stuff and that. That's probably the police use that as their kind of like focal point to do course, an investigation yeah. if, they, if they're doing one, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it ain't completely yeah. safe, you know no. what I mean? But there's, you know, there's there's been like... I mean, this is the thing, it's documentation as well, you know. I mean, yeah. That's how we're here chatting, you know, because yeah. we was able to talk on, on the grid. Um, there was that talk of the Underbelly uh, documentary. Yeah. But that's not happening now, is it? I ain't too sure what's happening. I've got anything to do with that video, yeah. so I'm not too sure what's happening. Yeah. It's probably still getting made and everything, but, yeah, I've just cut ties. You cut ties, yeah. yeah, yeah, for whatever reason. Yeah, it's just whatever, yeah. Yeah, 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 for other reasons. Um, so tell them whereabouts it is, tell them where Chrome and Blacks is and yeah, how in, to get here. We're in Bethnal Green, East London, two minutes away from Bethnal Green tube station in the Arches. Yeah. Yeah, that's where we are. As you can hear, live and direct, yeah? Um, I'm going to take some video cutaways for the video okay. just to show the area, man, because it's, it's, uh, it's a haven. But listen, I know you're busy, man. And we hung out okay. till, the, till the, end of the end of the night on a Friday, so big up. Thank you, Mr. Killer Keller. Yeah. And I hope to hear some beatboxing soon. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do. You know what I mean? That's zombie doing the beatboxing kills, man. <laughs> well, this is too much for me. Man, I'm out the door, man. Listen, Killer Keller podcast, yeah. Maximum respect, zombie, yeah? No problem, save killer, yeah. Kelly, yeah? Hold tight, hold tight. Be good. Yeah, man. Do not sleep, I repeat, do not sleep on my repeat. Subscribe and all that business to Killer Keller Podcast. Stay lucky, all right? Be Peace. Good.